Hi guys, welcome back to Honest Straightforward Reviews. Today, I'm making a very quick, short video how to install automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI on your Mac system. Now, this specific guide is for Mac OS with a Apple Silicon, but it should be the same for the Intel version as well. Now, before I continue, I'd like to let you guys know this channel completely survives on your subscriptions. For those of you who are subscribed, thank you and welcome back. Now, Automatic 1111 is available on GitHub's website. However, I'm using a different website to install this. I'll also go through a few troubleshooting that I faced myself while installing this. I spend a lot of man hours on figuring out how to install this and where it was going wrong now all you need is your terminal opened okay so this is my terminal window now if you do not know how to go there all you need to do is open spotlight so that's command shift and just type terminal and that'll come up after you've opened it you should see something like this with this command prompt don't worry about all this stuff now very first thing you need to do is install homebrew now i have a very fresh install and this does not have homebrew on it so as you can see that that is not found now to install homebrew i'd need you guys to go to brew.sh now the very first line that you'll see here on how to install homebrew now all you need to do is copy this command prompt so by clicking that clipboard go back into terminal control v to paste and or command v in the mac and just press enter now it'll ask you for your computer's password so make sure this is not your icloud password but rather your computer's password and that should work and you just press enter again now this takes a quite a bit of time so i'll let it run and you guys can watch it and it'll towards the end it'll have an issue that i can talk to you guys about when it gets to that now while it's doing that it's downloading xcode which is quite a massive download i believe it's about 12 gigabytes while it's doing that i've just found out that you can actually do homebrew installation with a pkg file so if if you've got a mac and you want an easier way you can do that however this is not too hard either okay now this is where a lot of websites don't prompt you properly and this is where my first troubleshooting problem will occur is as you can see where it says next steps run these two commands into terminal and whatnot if you don't run these homebrew wouldn't be installed properly on your mac you might run other apps and they might work but afterwards it'll give you issues so if you you're getting issues afterward where it's not installing stuff properly for automatic 1111 this is what you'll need to do okay so basically what i'll do is just copy it from here to here and command c and then command v and then enter and if if you don't see any errors and you just saw how quick that was that's all it is so what we can do now is just go brew space v dash v and that'll tell you what exact version you've got so this is the latest version of, as of august 2023 4.1.4 is the latest homebrew version so now that you have homebrew completely installed properly let's move back to this guide that really helped me out except for that part so step two is to get all of these things installed via the help of homebrew such as cmake rust python git and protobuf now now what i wanted to do was actually check whether automatic 1111 is compatible with python's 3.11 and what i found out is most likely it's not so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this prompt exactly and we're going to paste it in here 
Now this will take a bit of time so I'll meet you guys at the other side of the video and this will just be basically installing all the dependencies. Okay when you get to this screen everything has been installed for the prerequisites. Now what you need to do is just clone from github. Now you can do this let's just see which drive are we in so just put ls and this will show you all the drives that are available so you should some have something similar to this over here and all it's showing to you is basically your user where it is this is where we are see all those files now i've already downloaded or cloned as they say with github so i've already cloned the github link for automatic 1111 which is over here okay but you, what you, you you'll need to do is just cd and it'll take you right back out so i've just cleared my screen a tiny bit so all you need to do is basically go cd it'll take you right back out to this menu do an ls and it'll show you all this and all you do is copy this command v it and then enter so what that will be doing is copying that link onto your drive wherever you are now since this is a fresh install so i haven't actually run it here i've just copied it so ls i'm still in the drive so so all you have to do is put cd space command c and command v and you'll go into this drive and you can see this over here you can see that you're into this drive you can go ls and as you can see there's other software here after you've gone here you need to run the command okay and what you need to do is for this command you, anything you, that you need to run into terminal you need to go dot forward slash and then just put whatever you're loading so in our case we are going to load the web ui sh so this is the first time we're running it so let's get that started so it'll be downloading a few things from torch 2.0.1 and after a while you should get a prompt open and i just wanted to sh share with you guys system usage and your expectations of automatic 1111 so i've got a m1 max with a 32 gig ram and as you can see i've got 32 gig and it's already using about 12 to 13 gigs without actually doing anything i've noticed this app use around comfortably around 16 gigs alone so let's run my computer while it's doing that let's run my computer like i would normally run it at let's see the system pressures so all those things that are open they don't take a lot of ram they don't they're not ram intensive let's look at cpu usage while it's doing running all those things in the background so as you can see the system is hardly using any cpu the cpu is over 90 percent idle well it's gone just below 90 now and the memory usage is still well under there's no swapping happening as i have plenty of memory okay now as you can see the install has happened so after everything is finished all i want you guys to do is just rerun the dot forward slash web ui dot sh file and you'll be downloading some more things and your downloads would take a lot longer because you'll be obviously downloading all the models the control net extensions and whatnot that you need for automatic 1111 to fully be utilized so as you can see it's just checking everything for me and just reinstalling them for me okay as you can see this screen over here once you've reached this screen everything is good once you get this little note over here everything is good i want you to command c that and go into your web browser whatever web browser you're using command v to paste it and then just enter and voila you have web ui here let me get this out of your way okay so this is the web ui and by the way as you can see that is quite right i am using xdxl model and that's with the refiner as well so i have the refiner that i can use with it so if you guys want to see that and you guys want to see how to install the refiner with the xdxl 1.0 on your computer do let, drop me a comment like and let me know that you guys would want to see that and i can most certainly make a video for you guys so yeah guys that's basically it 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching it to the end. Take good care. Bye-bye. Thank you.